one. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Unsender Critic Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me again for another episode. Happy New Year to every single one of you. Thank you for tuning in in 2023. I hope this is your year and you get everything that you want. And it means the world to me that you tune in once more with another great guest. And that is another member of the GSA family, Mr. Stephen Calvert. Uh, Stephen is a MA grad like myself. Uh, he's made appearances in the Coltrane Britney music video. He is the author of Chasing. Uh, he's, well, he's an author and he stars in the award winning short film Chasing, which talks about the dangers, the dangers of gambling uh written and directed by Stephen and associately produced by the great Cristo Fernandez whom some of you may know as Danny Rojas in the Apple TV show Ted Lasso uh he's also made appearances on stage uh in the play slash documentary uh show The White Handkerchief from January to March 2022 which is set around the uh Bloody Sunday Massacre of 1972 a musical retelling of such an event and it was such a beautiful beautiful version of that the documentary to the making of it and all the behind scenes footage is on bbc iplayer the link to that is below uh so check that out you've only got a month left on iplayer so check it out while you can uh and also on top of that he's made appearances on tv in bloodlands floundering the mcgees on film the quarry school for good and evil on netflix and chasing and of course on stage the white handkerchief cherry orchard and henry the fourth part one and that is just a small sample of steven's incredible cv and the career that he's going to go on to build so steven how are you mate <laughs> <laughs> that you just listed off that cv has made me just feel very good about myself <laughs> <laughs> well that was supposed to do that was the intention <laughs> uh, no i'll tell you what oliver i'm very excited to be here and uh, finally you know we've, we've we've got to the point where we're able to actually uh have this and do this which is uh you know just um it's just a joy to be here honestly no, no thank you for coming man the pleasure is all mine so so we start on the podcast first one of 2023 uh to begin at the beginning as dylan thomas says uh where did the love of acting and love of art start for you Stephen? where did it come from well i i was a late bloomer um i you know as many lads where i grew about uh you know we all wanted to be footballers um and i was kind of in my early late teens was uh playing football religiously um and uh but i i got an injury i i remember like it was the first game of the season went up one header came down and l my ankle landed like this Aye. and it just kind of blew um so that was kind of the end of my football career <laughs> so <it was. laughs> um but then like my my uh i didn't actually i didn't start acting until i was 24 25 um and uh like prior to that like i always after the football, um, I was trying to find my way. And I, for as long as I can remember, I've uh, been a massive fan and I've loved sharks. <laughs> so my first degree, which I did eventually drop out of, uh, was marine marine science because wow. I, wanted, I wanted to study sharks. Um, I'm not gonna get into it, just didn't work out. And then <laughs> I moved on to um, business with computing. Mm. So I did a, a degree in that and basically ended up after that working in the corporate world for about three and a half, four years. And um, how I got into acting is quite a funny thing. Um, it's very random, actually. Mm. Uh, but a friend of mine from uni, I was up in my brother's house and my our friend, he comes up to my brother's house to see my brother. But I'm there as well. And the last time we seen him, he had... Uh, what I look like right now, you know, short hair, not actually not even a beard. It was clean shaven, and short hair. And he arrives up and he has this massive beard and massive hair. Basically looks like a Viking. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, we're curious. So we ask the question, what's, what's the new look for? And he says, oh, I'm uh, an extra on the show Vikings. Uh, I was like, oh, that's really cool. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and he says, I'm actually going down next, not next, but two, in two weeks time to um audition for the next season uh do you want to do you want to come down with me and i'm like okay I'll, I'll book a day off work and mm. i'll come down with you no problem so i book a day off work rock down to dublin now uh, because I'm, I'm from belfast uh well in and about belfast so we rocked into dublin and uh we do the audition which was basically signing a form and getting my picture taken 
and then lying on the form saying that I was good at archery, uh, which I wasn't at the time. Um, <laughs> the, th the things you do, the things you do for this, this for this job. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> but um, like that, that lasted maybe about half an hour, like in the room, getting the photo taken, filling the form. And then it was me, him and his younger brother. And the three of us left and we were just walking around Dublin because our, our bus back up wasn't for another two, three hours. Mm. And then his younger brother basically kind of said, um, wouldn't it be cool to be an actor? Like, wouldn't it be really cool to be an actor? And then me and him, because like I've been a massive fan of film and TV for as long as I can remember. I like, have loved film. Um, I think one of the very first films I've ever seen was, um, well, that I can remember was The Warriors. I think that was a film in the 70s. Mm. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Beverly Hills Cop, Jaws, those sorts of films. Um, and, uh, you know, so I've been a massive fan of film my entire life, but never, never thought of it as a, as a profession. But the brother basically said, oh, wouldn't it be cool to be an actor? And me and, me and the other guy were like, oh, yeah, it'd be really cool. But we all agreed in that moment, oh, but it's too late. It's too late. Mm. Um, and uh, we'll get on the bus, bus back up to Belfast, took about two hours. And I couldn't stop thinking about that for the entire bus journey on the way back up. I was like, is it too late? Is it too late? You know, because I, in my job and in university, I basically based my whole final year degree around presentations. So I enjoy getting up and talking in front of people. That wasn't an issue. I actually love doing that. Um, and in my job in the corporate world, I, I did a bit of that as well. And uh, and then, yeah, on the on the bus on the way back up, I was like, is it too late? So I Googled um, acting classes in Belfast and uh, one thankfully popped up. This was on the Wednesday. One popped up on the, the Sunday. Mm. So and it was uh, accents. <laughs> it's great. And uh, so I, I signed up to it, went on the Sunday. It was like maybe two hours on a Sunday morning. And I came out of that acting class and just sat in my car for about an hour in silence mm. and just kind of thinking holy shit mm. that was that was something that i've never experienced never felt it was it was so i don't know what it was it mm. was but it, it was just one of those things where i'm like where the hell is this being like where where is this where has this been my entire life why haven't i done this before mm. and then from that point I was just, you know, just trying to get my hands on as many acting classes as I could possibly can. Um, and it's quite, it's quite scarce to be quite honest in, in, in Belfast, which is a bit, that's one thing that uh, if anyone in Belfast is listening to this, that needs to change. Um, it really does need to change because there's so many actors in Belfast nowadays that there's just not enough acting classes. Any, but anyway, I, I you know, I digress. Um, but so I like from then on in, I was just acting class, acting class, acting class. And the main theater, I say the main theater, and now if someone hears this from the other another theater, they'll probably crucify me for this. But <laughs> the main theater in Belfast is called the Lyric Theater, and uh, they do a thing called the Drama Studio, and it's an eight month course. And when I did it, it was basically every Saturday for eight months, and it was an all day thing, all day Saturday. So like for the first four months, you, you train and, you know, Stanislavski, Chekhov, mask work, voice and text and so on and so forth. Wow. And then the second four months, you basically uh, do a production. So we, our production was Eternal Love. Um, uh, and it was great. But anyway, um, leading up to that, I was like, okay, how do I get into this? And it said the, the audition process was a, it was two monologues like drama school two mm. monologues classical and contemporary and at that point i was that clueless i actually had to google what is a monologue <laughs> like, i at this point i had no idea but i was like well what you know it's not gonna hurt me just doing this so i i basically filled in the 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 audition form and set my name in and got an audition slot and uh went in did the audition and it was it was sweet it was it was a cool experience and then a week later uh get the email you you've got a recall it's like oh, okay okay and then went in did the recall and uh 
And I remember, I remember the, uh, I was literally sitting on my sofa. It was a Wednesday night and I was watching the hunt for red October. And mm -hmm. I will always remember this. And I get a call from the director of the drama studio and saying, we want to offer you a spot on the drama studio. And I was like, hell yeah. Yeah. Let, let, yeah. Let's do it. Let's, let's do go, it. Man. Yeah. And so that was my, that was my first real, and that was, I was 24 at that point when I started the drama studio and that was my first real introduction to, to acting and, and, and that, that world. And by the end of the first semester, as, as it were, um, basically around Christmas time, we, we were doing scenes from uh, a play called 13 possible glimpses. Mm. And it was like an adaptation by Marina Carr. I think it was, I think it was um but uh, we did scenes from there it's like the scenes were like maybe two a minute 90 seconds two minutes long um like like a showcase for for for, for drama school and uh i remember just standing off like off stage and one of the girls because they all knew this was the very first time i was going to actually perform in front of a public mm. audience and one of the girls uh who was a, a fabulous actor then and she's doing amazingly well for herself now um she comes up to me is like how are you feeling you, you good to go and i was like i couldn't be more ready and i was just i was just in that moment i was like i think this is for me mm. i think this is for me and then when we got into the kind of the rehearsal process of the production like the director and the some of the acting coaches were asking me like have you thought about uh, drama school and i'm like what is drama school and <laughs> again so clueless i literally had no idea and they were like we, we, we think you should um yeah we should we think you should audition for drama school i'm like okay so how does that happen so they thankfully like i had such amazing mentors in that at that moment of my life to basically tell me this is what you need to do to get into drama school or at least audition to get into yeah. drama school yeah and like you 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 know yourself you 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 know you choose the schools you want to audition for you, you have your, your monologues and possible songs and whatnot, and you go and you audition, happy days. Um, and then I go through the auditions of, of drama schools and, you know, a, a, a vast array of drama schools. And when I came to my audition for, for Guildford, it was just, it, I did it and it just felt right. It just felt right. And I think that was down to who you'll know very well jack best of course of course uh, there was just something that was you know certain and i'm not going to name them um <laughs> certain uh drama schools that i went into audition for mm -hmm. there was a certain vibe that didn't feel right yeah i don't know as yeah. soon as i walked into the room with with jack with at that time laura weston and uh stara meyer um who was like uh laura was our um basically our, our lab and teacher and then star was our, our our voice uh voice teacher uh both amazing people amazing practitioners um and as soon as i walked into that room with the three of them mm. as the panel it was just like this feels this i felt so welcomed i felt welcomed immediately and even just the way the the like the the monologues were reworked it just felt like it like you you work with a certain director and mm. it might not it it might not work it might you know the the connection between you how how they say a certain thing may not you know the penny might might not drop yeah but with everything that jack said to me in terms of okay let's try the monologue this way it just made sense mm. it just it just made sense straight away and i was like okay this is um this is this is something here there's some i can feel it there's something definitely here and uh then when i got the offer for 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 guilford i was like 100 straight away yes yes <laughs> no, like no hesitation whatsoever yes um so that yeah and then yeah I, then i went to guilford and then that, that was like okay so this is what i'm doing now mm -hmm. my, my life has completely changed going from the corporate world nine to five of, of making X amount of money per year to, <laughs> to, to becoming an actor. Yeah. Uh, and very much not having a clue. Yeah. Really like 
what am what am I doing? How am I doing? Or how am I going to do this? It was just very much, you know, there's a, you know, when you have those kind of leaps of faith, you just need to do it. It just felt, it just felt right. And I think whenever I was in, like I was in corporate world for like three, four years and amazing company, amazing company. The people who I worked with were amazing people, but I moved around that company in terms of the departments, like yeah. a lot because I couldn't, I couldn't settle. I couldn't find my, my place. And I think after the first acting class I did, you know, which was the, the accent class, I was like, why the hell haven't I done this before? Yeah. It was just, it was just a, it was just like, um, like a light bulb moment type thing where I'm like, this just feels right. This, this feels yeah. like me. Yeah. Um, so basically that's my <laughs> that's my kind of story of how I got into acting. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a great one, man. No, I, I I I have a lot of um parallels with how you felt about the school in a way because I was supposed to have an in-person audition actually in April 2020, but of course that got pulled for obvious reasons. Um so it was the first time I ever done a self-tape and I had to send a self-tape off to a few other drama scores i'm not going to say which ones uh but they, they didn't they didn't feel right the energy didn't for obviously i thought i did a decent job with the monologue if yeah. you know i thought okay yeah i'm happy with that that's good um but for some reason when i sent the one into gsa well when i recorded the one for gsa it suddenly felt a bit it felt a bit different it felt like okay that was the first time i did that that monologue or two monologues in fact and mm -hmm. i thought that the energy was right. It was in, it was in a really, really good place. And uh, funny enough, I got a, and I uh, sent it in and uh, I got a recall on zoom as well, but funny enough, I got a funny story actually, because um, Jack was on my recall with the movement director, whose name I've forgotten, but she was a lovely girl. Um, <clears throat> I, I'd auditioned for Jack uh, three years previously before that, just, as soon as I finished my undergrad, didn't do too well in the audition I kind of just learned the lines and just blagged it so I know put my hands up I mean I did that um <laughs> but <laughs> but I get on zoom with her I do my monologue again she goes okay try it this way try it this way and then um I sort of said to her okay before we just have this debrief Jack I, I think I owe you an apology and she goes what, what what for well it's just that I auditioned for you three years ago and I did a fucking terrible Rosencrantz and Gilderstone <laughs> for you <laughs> <laughs> And uh, yeah, she found it funny. And then I said, look, I just wanted to know I've been away. I've grown up. I've got experience. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, I'm back, hopefully better. And she was very sweet. She said, it's OK. We've moved on. We've moved on. We're not going to hold that against you. But yeah. then, uh, but yeah, and then really lovely. And then I got the offer and I was like, wow, yeah. you know, off yeah. we go. And here, here we go. So what was your um, experience with drama school? What did you learn? And what did you kind of, what did it give you? And what did it take away through that time? uh what did it give me well i guess it, it gave me like utmost confidence um and it kind of cemented the idea that actually i can do this i remember like the first um you know the first semester was i was still trying to find my way yeah. um and there was there was a moment whenever we were because i think at the end of the first semester we were um uh, performing scenes um from from it was a Shakespeare scene, so it was at the end of the first semester, and we basically performed them in front of the school. That's right. And did you did you just do the same thing? Yeah, yeah, we did Shakespeare. Yeah, yeah, yeah to each other. Yeah, and and I remember it, it was late on into the semester where I I we were in rehearsals for 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 the scenes, and it was just a moment of like realization for me, hmm. where it's like actually I am I I can do this. Yeah, and there is something here with me as an actor. Uh, it was just the response from my scene partner, from Jack, from the students in my class that I had never had before. Where it, it was just, and I remember, <laughs> I actually remember. No, I was I was going to say because I've I've still got my journals from drama school in my my bookshelf because um, mm. I always like to kind of look back at them from time to time. Um, and I remember uh, <laughs> writing, writing down in like capital letters and underlinings, like you can fucking do this. <laughs> <laughs> you are meant to do this. Yes. Like, a million exclamation marks. Yeah. It was just, I was, I think we were doing, um, I was playing Hotspur mm. and it was, 
the scene was was quite you know it was it was me going off to battle and it was a conversation not necessarily an argument i'm trying to remind myself of the scene now it's, mm. it's been a while mm-hmm. um but it was a conversation between myself and my wife and it was it was heated it was emotional it was drama it was it was i loved i lo- loved the scene i actually should probably make a note to actually film that scene with someone so it should and, and put it up on social media yeah, um, yeah but i remember just throughout the whole rehearsal process i just i don't know i just i just wasn't it i wasn't hitting the marks i wasn't hitting the right notes mm. it just wasn't and there was moments like you do a whole day and then go back home and just kind of like sulk and and it's like like and especially off the back of me just literally quitting my full-time job like what the fuck have i done like what have i done (laughs) this is the biggest mistake of my life and um but it was just in that moment where it was just it was just kind of like the perfect moment where i needed something and jack gave me that something yeah and she you know she she just had all these really nice things to say about the scene the way i played the choices i made and it was just like okay i can't do this and but yeah it, for me it wasn't it was quite late on in to uh the first semester where i actually felt that oh actually i i can i am going to be an actor um but uh i i think i think with um one one thing for me, I, I kind of felt with the MA. I'm sure I'm not too sure if you felt the same way, mm. but it's you know it was a lot to digest. Yes, you know, um, and as much as I have, I have so many positive things, so many good things to say about my my degree. But if there's like one thing I would say that um, that I wish was a bit different. I don't know how they would do that. And I think maybe a longer course, but that's why they've got the two year MA now, which I think is like, that's amazing. That, yeah. That's amazing. But it just felt like there was a lot of information being thrown at you mm. um, every day. And you didn't necessarily really have time to breathe to <laughs> allow it to digest where like, for example, like on a BA, you'll, you'll do your year. Then you've got the whole summer to, you know, go back, look at what you've learned, make notes, so on and so forth. Um, that's like that's like the only that's like the only like um, thing I would say. Um, but I, I think it's, I think as well, even even for anyone doing like a BA course, um, like the 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 studying, the the teaching, it never stops. You know, no. once 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 you leave drama school, it's never. No. And I, I think I find that out not right away <laughs> I, I, as soon as i left drama school oh, oh my god oh, well i'm i'm a professional actor now I, that's i don't have to look at an acting book ever again um how wrong i was <laughs> how wrong i was um but i think you know overall my experience at, at guildford was okay it was phenomenal it was it was just a massive family and yeah, really um, and i think and i think for me I think one thing, because I was actually, I was thinking about this recently. Um, one thing I wish I allowed myself to do quicker, sooner, was allow myself to feel more. Mm-hmm. Like, basically, allow myself to, to fuck up more. I yeah. think when I went into drama school, I was I was trying to do everything right. Yeah. Immediately. And that's not the point of drama school. The, the whole the whole point of drama school is to be there you're, and you're in a safe environment where you can try things that may be so wrong it doesn't matter that's yeah. where you try it that that's that's where you try it and i think for me and i look back and this is this is one thing i will always remind myself before i go into a rehearsal process mm-hmm. uh mainly for theater or or actually even for screen work whenever i'm doing my own rehearsals and so on and so forth leading up to the the shift but one thing i didn't allow myself to do early on which i think was a bit detrimental to my to my uh to my whole kind of learning experience and development throughout the ma i didn't allow myself to ask enough questions Mm. um if i didn't understand something 
I think I was a bit too scared to put my hand up and say, actually, I don't, I don't, I don't understand what you mean here. Can yeah, you too. explain a bit differently or treat me like a baby? You know, just, I, I'm just, I'm, a, I, I don't know this. And again, for me, I think, you know, because I'd only really stepped foot into the, the acting world, I didn't know anything really. Um, but I felt as if, I think I felt like I needed to, to be right all the time. Mm. And that was like, I was, if, if I can give, you know, some pieces of advice to people who are currently in drama school, it's, you know, just be willing to feel like when you're in drama school, um, e even if you're doing a performance in front of the school in like outside of the, the classroom, it doesn't matter. Dram the whole point of drama school is to, you know, learn from your mistakes. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, amongst other things, of course. But I think that's that's one big note for me, for myself anyway. And I always remind myself to bring that into a rehearsal space um is that just try just try different things that might not work it doesn't matter that's the whole point mm. of a rehearsal room and that's the whole point of of, of drama school and I, I think i remember james mcavoy said this the same thing mm. where it's like three years of course the ba like it's three years for us it was the one year but it's 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 a period of time where you just go and you get to try things and if they work they work if they don't they don't but I think I was too hard on myself as well. Yeah. Um, and uh, and again, I was only really so by the time it came to, you know, the end of the first semester, I was like, why why wasn't my mind like this at the beginning? You know, <laughs> so it was like three months of like trying to be perfect. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just, and now, you know, and yeah, like I said, that's one thing I will always remind myself to do. Go because like you could easily you know, go into a rehearsal space with a brand new group of actors and there's like the ego just basically saying, okay, you have to put on a show here. You have to prove to them why you're here. And if you do something that is a bit mediocre or shit, they're going to think, oh, why is this person here? Yeah. But, and I think, I think actors, if any, if like, you know, if anyone listens to this and they're, and they're in that mindset right now, get away from that. It is the worst mindset to have, and it will be detrimental. You know, it will screw you up. It will screw your whole development as an actor up yeah. by not allowing yourself to be open to just just, just being a bit shit, yeah. <laughs> like basically. Um, <laughs> but, as, but the thing is, as soon as I as soon as I realized that, I was like, and I remember, I remember it was a, it was a nice moment with a a teacher. Um, was a, uh, I don't know if she's still at GSA, but Anna Tringham? Uh, it ring, I can't say I had lessons with Anna, but the name does ring a bell. Yeah. Yeah. But we, we were doing a lot of mask work with her, mm. um, which was, was fabulous. And I remember, and I got to the point of like, no, I'm just going to, if I don't understand it, I'm going to put my hand up. And I'm going to say, I don't get it. Please explain it to me. And I got to the point of with, there was a class with her and I was like, I was like, I, no, 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 that doesn't make sense to me. Uh, why are they doing it like that? And she was like, no, no. And she came, to, she came to me. I remember the class finished and she came to me at the end of the class. Like, I really appreciate you asking that question. Yeah. It's like, and that was kind of like, okay, this is the way it needs to be. It's, it's a collaborative process, you know, and we're all trying to get to the same point of being, and becoming better actors, better performers, mm -hmm. uh, better artists. And uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, I think we, I think drama school is really good. I know DSA is very good, you know, having been there, you know, it's, it really teaches you to embrace failure and, uh, and it's okay to, to screw up, you know, I mean, I, I remember there was one day we did some self tapes and we had to, and we all watched each other. And we were given mm -hmm. this script. It was really heavy kind of finance talk and stuff like that. It was from mm -hmm. a show. I can't remember which one. Uh, I tried to learn it. Uh, and it failed so miserably. You can literally, and the recording is literally me just going, uh, uh, 
<laughs> and, and in front of everyone and in front of the whole class and you could see everyone being so polite and just watching and just like there's someone in the corner just trying not to laugh and I was just there going oh, I just want the world to swallow me up I want to disappear I want to disappear I want to disappear right now um but you know but afterwards it was like okay all right didn't do too well there okay that that was a bad tape it's now been deleted no one will ever see that <laughs> thanks the heavens but uh but it taught me that um okay so going forward i know now just to make sure i know the words i mean yeah i mean in my defense it was a tricky script but i could have been more well more well prepared of course um but it was like so going forward now i now know i will never do a self-tape as shit as that ever again. <laughs> yeah that, that's the mark that's never the mark, go yeah. below that or you know you need to be aware of that now <laughs> exactly exactly so so that, that was good motivation actually even though in that moment everyone's watching me literally you can you can see in my eyes i'm going what the fuck is the next line what the fuck is the next yeah. line uh and i'm uh, everyone was very sweet they gave me a round of applause and stuff and yeah. did, funny enough actually after the the tape i put my hand up and i actually said to the room i'm sorry you had to watch that but <laughs> But everyone, but everyone in the room just was very sweet, and they said, "No, Ollie, stop apologizing. Look, it's we're here to learn. We're here to screw up. We're here to make mistakes and stuff." So yeah, and I think that's actually one thing as well that I wanted to touch on. Um, and the the beautiful thing about uh, drama school is, and you know, I'm I'm sure it's like this at every drama school, um, because you know, you you basically you you go in and you strip yourself naked metaphorically of course um, or 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 maybe some people do some people do maybe some people do um <laughs> it's, it's it's a place where you go to essentially you know strip away your armor you know and i think for a lot of people who go on to do ma's is that they their their background like from I'm a prime example I came from a, a business a yeah. corporate world background you know so I had a certain demeanor about me I had a certain um you know attitude a certain armor that protected me in the corporate world um and whenever I came to drama school or started acting that hindered me still having that uh, that armor there and uh, not allowing myself to open up to certain things that were being you know given to me from other actors um like especially in in, in classes such as Lavin where and, and, and movement where you're, you're you're connected physically and I mean and you know yourself and whoever's listened to this who's done Lavin before they know it can get heated and it can get emotional physically and and you know there might I I still recall yeah, you know, some of my best moments amongst so many good moments. And it's, it's hard to even recall all the moments, all the good moments I had in drama school. Yeah. Um, some of the best moments for me were in Laban with Laura Weston, mm. who is mm, one of the most beautiful souls ever. Like, oh, she's, and as a practitioner in, in movement and in dance and, and Laban, she's just one of the best mm. ever. And, oh, God. Um, but, the amount of times we as a class ended up just in a group huddle and just crying um, and and come up coming away and just it was the connection we had through breath was just it you know you just, you just don't get that you just don't get that anywhere else nah. and, and, and you know like and i think that's why we're blessed to do what we do because mm. you get to have those connections mm. that it's like what the hell is this yeah. i don't want this to end no. um but i think um to touch on you know what you were saying about you know you know people were just they're being polite they you know they give you a round of applause and i think you need that and i think uh, and that's what gsa was for me it was a family mm. it, it was it was a group of people that you know um but I have my best mates who I grew up with. Like they're none of them are in the arts, but they're my best mates through and through. Yeah. Um, and I have a certain relationship with them. It's a very different relationship to what I have with people who I went to drama school with, hmm. because of the experiences we had together, um, and because we we went, and I'm sure you're the same, and I'm sure 
every actor is the same you know in during drama school you go on this emotional journey yeah and it's 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 one of those journeys that it's you know you don't want it to end you you don't want it to end you want it to keep going you want to explore so many different little moments uh with 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 your classmates with your friends with your family and and i think it's important to build that connection build that family in drama school Mm. because whenever you leave drama school you're going to need them you're going to need those people like pretty much every day um because it's a dog eat dog world out there and it's such a cliche to say but it like it's it is it really really is and you know um it's you know you, you, you need those people to just be there just to be there for you to help you um help you with self tips um help yeah. you with you know, prepping for auditions um uh and and i think that was the most amazing like that that was my tribe you know yeah. and yeah. still still to this day um like we had we actually had our our five year <laughs> five year anniversary i i couldn't unfortunately i couldn't go because i was filming um, but we had our five year anniversary mm. and I think there was 20, 25 of us in our class and it was split into two. Yeah. And, and I think at least 16 or 17 off the class were there for oh. the five year anniversary. And like, cause I, I, I was like a few people were working, a few other people are living over in America and other places and so on. So they, they couldn't go. Yeah. But it's just amazing to see that, you know, even five years on that group of people are still that close and that well connected. And we, you know, we, we act as, as soundboards for, for each other. And, yeah. and I think that's, that's cause it's, it's, you know, at times it can be a very, very difficult industry to be in. Um, you know, when the high, when the highs are high, they are high and they're beautiful and they're the, oh, they're the most amazing things ever. But when it's, when you're in the low, yeah, they're fucking low. It sucks. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 sucks. it really does. And yeah, yeah. You, you need you need those people to kind of reassure you that you're not alone. And um, and you know, to, to go out for a coffee, go out for a pint, go out for a walk. You know, read 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 a seat, read a play together, whatever it is. But just uh, you know, and I think my takeaway amongst many things from from drama school was the, the people themselves like mm. I, I i learned a lot i learned a lot and you know i'm still learning I, like five years on i'm still learning the craft of acting and, mm. I th- and i think it's one of those things where i think and that's the, that's the amazing thing about about acting and, and and this 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 thing we do and you know it's never ending yeah. you know it's it's you're never going to learn at all you're never going to learn at all. You're always going to learn something new on, on, on a job or re- reading a bit of poetry or reading an article. You're going to learn something that you can take into a, a role um, because like the human condition is so, it's just, it's, it's, oh my God, it's, it's never ending. And, uh-huh. you know, and, and I think, you know, I, I learned so many things from drama school, but I think one of the best things from drama school were the people. It, it, it was just like it was just uh and, and 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 gsa was just it was good i think you used the word energy mm. earlier on and i think um there was just a really lovely energy about the building and yeah. um and the classrooms and uh, the teachers were amazing and beautiful people but they also pushed you yeah which was which is what you needed which is what you need yeah. Yeah. There's literally there's, there's literally no points like you know we 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 tap in the back you did well well done and really you were a bit shit. A bit um, shit. <laughs> uh, yeah. I remember um uh, sort of applying for, well before I applied I worked with someone called um Katie Heath like on my monologues and stuff mm-hmm. and she she used to teach at GSA I think she's over at Drama studio or center now i know one of them's closed down one of them one of them that isn't closed uh yeah. and uh she was brilliant you know she um kept saying things to me like i would come in and i would think do you know what i think i've got this today and i go in and i do the speech for her and she goes no don't believe you <laughs> <laughs> don't believe you and i was like oh, <laughs> but, 
but you know, but that's exactly what you need. I'm not yeah. I'm not criticizing her at all. I thank you, Katie, if you're listening. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's like you're like no no no. Just tell me I'm good. Just tell me I can do. I'm good. Okay. Tell me I'm believable, and you're not. It's like that's that's like the last thing you need is someone to basically baby you and to and to say you like because what's what's the point? Like if you if you if you if you do a, if you do a self tape and your friends helping you and you're just you know you're you're just it's you're just not performing truthfully, then what's the point in your your friend saying no no, bang on send it on to the casting director? No no no, you want that friend to basically say no that was shit. Yeah. Let's do it again until you get it right. Yeah. And you know, and I thankfully you know I have that in my friends because i'm 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 shit a lot <laughs> no but because i like, i'm thankful that i have my friends who you know they cut through the bullshit and, yeah and they will tell me the truth mm. because like again what's the point if they what's the point not you know yeah. unless, unless they have a plan and they're yeah. also going up for the role and then <laughs> which which is no, actually, do you know what? Actually, I'll tell you what you think. So I auditioned for a feature film. Sneaky really. bastard. <laughs> yeah. I knew. Was like, me, me, me and two of my friends, uh, I'm very close with, I actually did the, the White Hanker Chief with at the beginning of the year. We were oh, all yeah. auditioned for the same role. All right. And, but we were all like, we, we were all just, we were helping each other. Because in, in our in our minds, we were like, if I don't get it, I want you to get it. And then, if I, you don't get it, I want you to get it. It was like that. We're I'm 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 so blessed with with the friends that I have. Yeah. That, um. Even if we're going up for the same role, it's it's not a competition. It's like okay, let's at least get one of us in this, and at least one of us. You know, none of us got it. Um. <laughs> none of us got it. But it, Damn it, it. <laughs> it happens. It yeah. happens. Um. But actually, another thing. I want to touch on with 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 Guilford and drama school um yeah. and like the kind of whole kind of family ensemble and that, that environment um I actually addition I had recently was for um Romeo and Juliet in mm. in the Lyric Theatre in, in in Belfast wow and I uh I was put up for for two roles for Tybalt in Paris um and I was oh, I was dying to play Tybalt I just oh I wanted to play Tybalt so much um Fantastic. And the first thing I did, I called Jack. Well, I text Jack because Jack is, um, for anyone who doesn't know, Jack is an absolute specialist yeah. uh, in Shakespeare. She is a genius when it comes to Shakespeare. She has absolute written genius. on Shakespeare. And, and I knew, and I knew because she's still, at, she's still, you know, roots for us. She still wants us to do well five years like it, when I came to see you guys in July, you know, um, you know, I was out for drinks with Jack. Like Jack now is a friend. She's not a teach. She's still a mentor, but she's a friend. She's we're now very good friends, and that, that mm. that's that's amazing. From a from a teach from head of year to a teacher to a mentor to a, a friend. It's just that journey with her has been amazing. So I knew you straight away. Okay, I've I've got an audition for Shakespeare. I know exactly what to do. I'll text Jack. Can we get a Zoom call and can we basically work this together? And without any hesitation, I would love to. So we 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 did that, and you know I got down to the final round um, off that. Didn't get it, um, but you know, and I th I think that's actually what one I think that's one thing I've learned. Um, you know, if you don't get a job, like it's, you don't get a job. It's one of those things. Mm. Um, but the main, the main thing that I've, that I've learned, thankfully I got to a point and it took me, it took me, oh, definitely over a year, maybe even two years out, out of drama school. But, uh, one thing that I've learned, um, is that if you don't get a job, okay, you don't get a job. But the main thing is to do yourself justice in that audition room with that self tape because if you put on a good show if you put in a good performance a truthful performance mm. um that casting director is going to remember you know so if another job comes down the line that you don't even 
know about, you mm. get a call. Here, um, and I know you didn't get this one, but I've got this role in this production here. I think you'd be good at this. Uh, can you send a tape in? You know, so you just you just never know. You just never know what's down the line, what's around the corner. Um, so, you know, I, I I didn't I didn't I didn't get it, but it's it's not it's one of those. Whenever I got the email, the final the eventual final email is like it hasn't went your way. I was like, oh, it sucked. But then, like within five minutes, I was like, okay, what's next? Mm. You know, I've thankfully I've got to the point where it's like, not ev you you can't have everything. Mm. So it's you know. And the audition I had, I had an audition last week for another play that would have conflicted in terms of the schedules with the Romeo and Juliet. And I'm the, the play, the audition I had, I'm, I'm dying to get that one, you know? So like there, there's certain things like if you don't get a job, you don't get a job, but more often than not, there is something just right around the corner. Yeah. Um, but as, as well as that, it's, you always need to put yourself in good light with a casting director um that if you don't get the job they probably will like casting directors they're smart people and they have databases upon databases of actors who they have who they've basically got in for 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 a role and they might not have get, gotten it but they 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 will remember like trust me they they will remember your name they will remember your face they will remember your skills and you know what's what's, what's that expression what what's not for you won't uh, uh, oh, um, I, I always I don't know I always mess this expression up um, uh, I was, wait how does it work I, I don't, how do you think it goes <laughs> <laughs> if it's not for you it's not, it's like, if it's not for you know what I'm just going to say if it's yeah. not for you it's not meant to be I don't know it's oh, okay um, okay okay there, there was actually a thing Brian Cranston was talking have you ever heard him talk about the wallet uh, the wallet yeah so basically um, you know long story short he's walking down the street he finds a wallet um and he picks the wallet up it's not his uh -huh. it's not his. it's someone else's and he was like and he was basically saying like not everything is meant to be for you but all all you can do is go into that audition room and and just do do yourself justice and and focus on the stuff that's in your control mm. like there's so many things oh my god there's so many things that are out of your control so many you know so many. um that you you need to just that that's why once you do the audition it's done it's done stop thinking about it like i have to admit there's been some auditions and i'm sure you're the same there's been some auditions i've had where it's taken me months to get over <laughs> it's just one of those things um <laughs> and it, it's it, it drives you insane it but does. like like thankfully I'm, I'm at a point now where it's you know like I, it's, I think again, yeah, it's another thing Brian Cranston actually said. It's like I'm not going in to get a job; I'm going in to do a job, mm. and I love that. So my yeah. like my mindset now is I'm not going into audition; I'm going into rehearse. Mm. You know, I'm going into play with 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 this casting director. Um, take that however way you will. Uh, so... <laughs> Yeah. nothing sexual <laughs> no, no, no. I, I will literally i'll be blacklisted from that. <laughs> oh it's, it's that steven character again jesus <laughs> oh god he's a frisky fella isn't he <laughs> but, i'm joking um, i'm joking i'm joking <laughs> no, no, no of course so no uh we, we, we need to we need to be able to laugh at ourselves we need to be absolutely able to laugh at ourselves. absolutely um, yeah but I, I think, you know, that's another thing that was beautiful about, um, you know, the, the experiences I had at GSA and the people I met there yeah. is that's still five years on. I, I can still call upon them. They can still call upon me. Yeah, um, absolutely. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure, you know, you know, it's not just it's not just GSA. You know, I'm sure that like at every drama school, everyone has their own experiences and everything. But I think I think the beautiful thing about um like in, okay, I'll do, I'll say this in comparison to my my undergrad degree where I studied business and computing. You know, I wasn't being held by someone crying. You know, <laughs> so and having that emotional connection, it's yeah. just it's the, the, the beautiful moments you can have uh, during drama school. Is it's just oh, uh, they're 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 priceless. They they really really are, mm -hmm. and they're invaluable to 
especially to allow yourself as an actor to be able to open up and to you know understand how far you can go emotionally mm. and you know to understand how your mind works in terms of um finding those little moments to bring into a scene yeah. um but I, th- I think going back to what i was saying which i did badly mm. in the, at the beginning of drama school that i didn't allow myself to open up enough i i tried to get everything right i was a bit um oh i don't want to ask a question because i don't want to sound like a dumbass um oh jesus so so silly so so silly yeah 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 so silly um yeah, you're, you're not alone on that mate you're not alone at all on that so you know everyone's i was exactly the same you know just thinking oh what if i ask this question i'm gonna look like such a prick <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But but they, but they go no. Funny enough, in a in a previous episode with um, uh, Sabs, did you have Sabs while you were there for Lecoq Lecoq training, Samson and the Clift? No, I don't think so. Don't think okay, so. good. Yeah, Sabs is amazing. Shout out to Sabs, she's just fantastic. She trained with the man himself, Jack Lecoq, in uh, in Paris back in the day, and uh, but we did a podcast episode together. And I was at some point in the episode, I go, "Oh, I probably should know should have known more about that for today." I'm so sorry, something like that. But she was very good. She went, "No, Ollie, this is this is it's one of this is what it's all about. You know, you you're here to learn stuff. You know, you don't apologize for not knowing something that you want to know more about." And I think that's such a big thing, you know, about actors and stuff um i think i've got a good story about um you mentioned earlier about all being in a huddle in laban and mm-hmm. just crying together and stuff i remember there was one friday in a first term i think we just we've been there for about six weeks or something like that so we got the initial kind of nervousness sort of okay <laughs> out, out, out the way and yeah. we all started well, i felt i can't speak for everyone else but i felt i started to settle in more and started to ask more questions be a bit more open than i was when i first started mm-hmm. uh it was one friday we ran through our shakespeare scenes all together and me and um a guy called david did julius caesar we did brutus and cassius mm-hmm. um the scene in the tent towards the end of the end of the play and I don't know what happened that day we all got up and I I was just filled this there was an energy in the room and I can't describe it suddenly my character suddenly I knew more about him in that moment we I stood up and we just me and David we just we really bounced off each other and I think we really did the scene really we kind of sat down after that after going you know what I think that was the best we've done it so far mm-hmm. that was really good and then after that everyone else suddenly discovered the energy as well and it's like and from start to finish every single duologue was not only just brilliant it was so nice to watch and at the end of that session we were just looking at each other going where, where did that come from where did that yeah. come, where did that come from it's just the energy in the room and everything it was it was spectacular and you know that that's something I you don't get I don't think anywhere else apart from drama school, I don't think, you know, or yeah. that in a play, um, you know, you, you find that that ability to just some sometimes you walk into the room and you just do the best you can and you mm-hmm. and you walk out thinking, Ugh, oh well, well, mm-hmm. what 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 what's next? Let's just okay, cancel, continue. Look, I might not have got it, but look, yeah, it's yeah. an experience. But other times you walk out and you go, fucking hell, where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> And you go, where did I, I wasn't planning on it, but I like it. <laughs> this is good. Yeah. This is but great. The, yeah. But that's 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 the thing about literally just stripping everything away, opening yourself up to yeah. to have those moments of of surprise. You know, yeah. I think it's so important to do that. Yeah. And so that, that I think that's a good lead on to something you wanted to talk about today, which was um uh audition settings. You're not don't be fearful of the audition settings and what do you What's your experience of audition settings been like since you left drama school? Uh, thankfully, I have uh, become a lot more confident and a lot more relaxed. Yeah. Um, I think one of my one of my first, and I'll give you, I'll give you an example of that actually. Uh, one of my first auditions at a drama school was um, was for the Ferryman. Um, yeah. And you know, it had a really good run in the West End. Went to Broadway, and I was auditioning for the new west end cast which eventually then did go to broadway um i didn't get it <laughs> but but i remember i so I, I go to the royal court theater uh from the for, for the first round of auditions and uh great experience it was in the room with the cast and director um 
did did the two sing fine happy days um there was nerves of course um but uh then I go away, I get a recall, come back to the recall, and I'm in the room with the casting director, and I think it was the, the producer or associate producer. Um, do the two scenes again, and uh, the associate producer or the producer, he, he, he asked me, uh, can you do that in a, a Southwest London accent? Mm -hmm. and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> Of course, of course I can. Okay. Yeah, just where do you see this? Um, and completely <laughs> fucked it up. Um, because <laughs> I can't do a Southwest London accent. <laughs> well, you can and now. I <laughs> and I knew, and I knew, and I knew that. Even when he asked me that, there was like a, a moment of like, what, what the hell is a Southwest London accent? I was like, yeah, no problem. I can do sure. this. And proceeded to do an accent. Don't really know what accent it was um and ended up not getting the job and <laughs> so but fast forward to now and my audition i had for uh a play so yeah audition i had last week for a play and at the end of it um the director said to me uh what's your what's what's your belfast like now the people are listening to this I am Northern Irish. I don't really have a Belfast accent. I have a generic Northern Irish accent. Some people actually think I'm American at times. Some people think I'm English. I've gotten Australian before. Um, so my my accent's a bit of a hybrid. And yeah. so, but at the end of the audition, he was like, uh, so what's your Belfast like? And I said to him, in two months' time, it'll be perfect. I didn't try, I didn't attempt to do it in the moment. I didn't have that fear which i had five years ago um because at the end of the day the casting director the director whoever it is is in the room with you they want you to be the solution you know mm -hmm. they, they're not trying to catch you out which i for some weird stupid ass reason thought that as soon as my drama school yeah i was like you know they are not trying to catch you out. They are, mm. you know, they, they want you to be the answer, mm. you know, and thankfully, thankfully, I, I, I finally realized that. And, and after I realized that my auditions were a hundred million times better. Um, and, and I, and I think it's, I think it, well, relaxation exercises are very important. Yeah. Um, you know, going going into an audition setting for anyone. Like I I I listen to to podcast interviews with like seasoned actors, like Hollywood actors who still have for for auditioning in front of certain directors, they'll still get nervous. Hmm. It, it happens. Like I, I think I think with auditions, it, it feels, you know, it feels like everything's on the line. You know, so of course it's there's going to be nerves. Of course there's going to be pressure, but I think the two things two things probably there'll probably be more but two things um one the casting director or whoever it is you're auditioning in front of they want you to be the answer as simple as that um and they they also they want you to i, I guess take risks mm. with, with choices but if you're going to take risks with choices make sure they're clear and make sure you commit to those choices don't 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 half ask them. Um, you 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 prepare your your scene or whatever it is in a certain way. Um, understand, but also understand why you're choosing to do it in this way, mm. because they will probably ask, <laughs> why did you do it that way? Um, so really understand why you're doing it in a certain way. But then I think when the re where the relaxation comes into play is because this will usually happen is then the director will say, okay, let's, let's try it this way. Mm. You know, so, and that's basically what I find is basically what, what a recall is all about. Mm. You know, because you're being brought back into the room because they liked what you did in the first edition, you know, so do that again, mm. but then they're going to say, okay, can this person take direction? Mm. Can, can I say to this person here, try it, um, you know, not as not as big 
not as big. OK, so let's tone it down, make it a bit more romantic, whatever it may be. But they're going to say, OK, can this person take my direction? Can they actually take direction and be open to um, changing it in the moment, on the day? And and I think actually it was because I was listening to uh, your your episode with uh, Ross White and Tom Berkeley. Mm. And it was a really nice thing. And and I tend to do this myself. Um, but of course, David Bradley's a lot more experienced than, than me. <laughs> but um, it was a nice thing that uh, Ross and Tom said about um, David Bradley having basically five different versions of ways to perform the same. Mm. You know, so I, I think it's I, I, I so I think it's very much very much just being open to changing on the spot but also i think you know uh, you know preparation like that that's 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 yeah. the first thing it, it it goes without saying if you don't prepare you don't deserve the goddamn role just exactly. as simple as that exactly um but if you do get the role you jammy bugger um <laughs> and <laughs> it happens it it, oh, it happens it happens yeah. <laughs> yeah but um i you know preparation is 100 percent key um, and over preparation is even better because you, you just don't know what's going to happen in that room. Yeah. Like, you know, like my audition I had on, on, on last week, you know, I prepared it in a certain way because of, because I knew, because they, they basically just said, um, <clears throat> sorry, uh, mouth is getting a little bit dry. That's all right. <laughs> um, because they basically give us a character breakdown. So it's like, these are the characters that are going to be in the play. Um, but just come in, perform a dramatic monologue. So I chose, that's a contemporary play, but I chose um, The Feast of Crispian from Henry V, but translated it, made it contemporary, put my own spin on it. Nice. But I, I, I cer certain choices I made were very, were very relevant and characteristic of, of some of the, the characters that are going to be in the play, mm. you know, so like I was like, okay, that's why I made those choices. It may have not fitted with, you know, Henry V getting his man going to go into the Battle of Agincourt, but it was a certain way. It's like this is why I'm choosing this. Yeah. But then, but then I also thought, okay, what other ways could I play this? Luckily enough, whenever the direct director said, okay, let's let's try it like this. Whenever he said, let's try it like this, I already thought of trying that could be an option so i immediately kind of knew okay this is what way i should do this um so i i think um yeah i think you know just well you know i think it's obvious but preparation is 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 so 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 important and mm -hmm. i think I, I i guess i i guess um as soon as i came out of drama school you know auditions were like they are to every actor they're they're alien to every actor you know because we we don't really um i guess we don't really get much preparation in that respect um during during drama school um and i think there needs to be definitely more of that um in terms of like yeah the setting the environment of an audition this is what's going to happen this is what could happen um and uh but i, I think i think my experience and my development my journey with with auditions now is i'm just i'm a lot more relaxed mm. uh with 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 um, casting directors or directors, because I know they want me to come in and smash it. They, mm -hmm. they, they want me, you know, to come in and it's like, that's the guy, that's mm -hmm. it. Sweet, we can go home now, happy days. <laughs> you know, so in, enjoy, and I think as well, I think what's helped me is actually, you know, switching my mind to, you know, believe that I'm going into a rehearsal process and I'm not going in to try and get a job, yeah. you know, because I think whenever I, 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 I put that pressure on me, it, of course, like everyone's different. Everyone's different. Yeah, of course. But for me, whenever I was like, oh my God, I need to get this. I need to get this job. If I don't get this, my life is over, you know? And I, I tended to think like that in my early years out of drama school and, you know, I, going into every audition, there was so much pressure. There was so much pressure. And I was like, why are you doing this to yourself? Jesus Christ. You know, you need to flip it in a way. So I think, and I remember like that, 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 um, that video of Brian Cranston talking about 
you know, I'm not going to get a job. I'm going in to do a job. It was just that little mm. thing that's always stuck with me. So now I'm thinking, okay, I'm going into um, first day of rehearsal, you know, or if it's for a screen job, um, you know, I'm going on first day of set, yeah. you know, and, you know, let, let, let's play. I, I'm going I'm to show what I have thought of in my mind, of, like who the character I think should be, but I am, I can just throw that away. Hundred mm. percent. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think. Yeah, I think. Um, yeah, the casting directors they want you to be the solution. Yeah. And uh, to eradicate or at least try and get some pressure off yourself, you know, yeah. to treat it as if it's uh, a rehearsal process, and mm. and, and it's, you, you've already kind of had certain dialogue. Yeah. You know, you've already had a you know certain communication with with the casting director director so on and so forth and you're in you're going to go in and the two you're just going to play and just trying to find the character to, together um at the beginning i didn't think like that at all mm. didn't think like that at all and it definitely hindered definitely hindered but i think now I, thankfully I'm, I'm i'm thankfully i'm in a better place <laughs> um but then but then there's there's times when it can you know you you think like that because i actually i I auditioned for, you know, because my in terms of my casting, I, I I would happily be in the fantasy sci-fi genre for the rest of my life. I would happily, and that's why, like the the film I did with Netflix, The School for Good and Evil, yeah, like, that was that was phenomenal. Um, but I I, I auditioned um, I auditioned for a big Viking film. And I think I auditioned maybe like six, six times, six or seven times. Wow. I met, I met, I met the director as well. And, but he was just like, because my, because like the audition I had last week, before I even performed, I was talking to the director for like 10 minutes. We just had a, a conversation. So it, 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 it allowed me to kind of relax and, and, and chill out and, and already have a bit of a communication, have a relationship with them. And that was all good. But I remember going in for this audition for this massive film. And I was like, this is like, this is me. This is my role. Um, and I go in and it was like, hi, how you doing? Let's go. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That can happen as well. Where, you know what? Because you, you have no idea what has just happened before. Yeah. Like they, they, they could have just had the worst audition ever. And they could be in a, in a, bit of a bad mood and you come in and they're just like okay let's go they're human it can happen 100 yeah. it can happen so i think i think that that's why just preparation preparation yeah. is is key and it was interesting because i was listening to was something josh brolin said um uh, he he reads his scripts like a hundred times mm. you know so he he over prepares he over prepares so for example if there's a bloody earthquake on set he can still do the scene because he he knows the character inside out. He he knows if anything uh, like uh, unexpected comes his way, he can work with that, mm. and you know and, and do it. So I, I think the more you prepare, um, allows you to go into any audition setting, mm. no matter what it is, um, and, and and still be comfortable, be relaxed, and also also as well as that, like I think. You know, like like I said before, they they want you to be the solution. They they want you to be good. So if for like, and that's the thing. That's one thing I did badly whenever I went in for that big Viking film. Mm. I I if, if I went in, I we were like, let's go. I, uh, okay, okay, okay. So I didn't even set myself. I didn't take my time. Like I I just like, oh okay, no problem. Like I will do what you say, rather than saying to them, no no no, I need thirty seconds. I'm in a new room here. I just need my own time just to kind of get into my head. This is who the character is. This is their wants. This, you know, this is how I'm going to get it. So on and so forth. Um, which is, you know, so again, that happened. It's not a bad thing that it happened because it's a learning experience. It's a, le it's a learning thing that I will always remember. So like whenever um, a casting director, and I love it when a casting director says in your own time. And mm. then the, and it's like the room's yours. Mm. The room is yours, and you can take as much. Well, <laughs> to a certain degree, don't take the <laughs> <laughs> But 
but you, you can take what you at the time you need to allow yourself to just relax get into the character and then okay let's go but you know and i, and I think i think it's it's not a bad thing to you know go in and you know control the room the room's yours make the room yours yeah rather than you know going in you know nervous and, and fearful and and you know because you're again you're 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 not going in there thinking oh i'm i you know i i don't am i going in there to waste their time here you know you're yeah. in no way shape or form. and sometimes i thought that yeah, I, yeah. I i thought that i was like you know i'm going in here and i, I was like is this a waste of time or whatnot like no, 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 no. Like you're going in there. They want, they have called you in. They want you to be there. So, you know, take a, like, even if they say, okay, uh, let's, let's, let's go. And it's like, okay, just uh, take your time. It's like, give us, give us 20 seconds here, please. Give us 20 seconds because you need to make sure that you're in the best mindset um, and to, to showcase how you see the character. Yeah. Um, but I think, I'm trying, I'm, trying, I'm trying to think this is I do this I go off on one I, I literally go off on a tangent from time That's to great, time man. it's great um but I I think yeah with with auditions it's just um they they want you to do good they want you to be good yeah. like I think that's I think the quicker we learn that the the, the better our audition experiences are going to be absolutely um, yeah I think um it's just going back to Brian Cranston he one thing that really stuck with me with him was he, he gave this talk and someone was sneakily recording it in the audience and whoever you are thank you <laughs> very good uh and uh he said the best thing i can do is that i might not be he said i'll be sat in an audition room and you think okay they're very good he's very good she's very good and you're, just like, and you're going okay all right just the best thing you can do you can't try and be better than them mm -hmm. but what i can do is work harder than all of those people put together that's the only thing I can do. And he did this really lovely thing. He said, I'm going to, when you go into an audition room, the thing that I'm thinking is I'm, I'm going to do whatever I can to make the casting director go from here to here. Mm -hmm. So now you've got my attention. So they're not just sitting there going, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks very much. Nope. Yeah. Okay. And it's like, okay. Yeah. Right. I like that. So, mm -hmm. It's like that line in um, Tarantino's Django Unchained. It's like, okay, you had my curiosity. Okay, <laughs> now you've got my attention. And it's like, I love that line. The love the that best line. the best thing you can do is just work harder, or just, not exactly like you know, not drill yourself too hard. Of course, don't overwork yourself, but be in a really good place where you can. The director or the writer can throw any question at you, and you yeah. go. I know the answer. Yeah, I know the answer. I know the answer. Rather than they go, okay, so what did you think of the character? Um, <laughs> and you know, that's a horrible, horrible situation to be in. So, so um, yeah, know, know your stuff. Know, know your stuff, oh. and just know, yeah. Well, I can't hundred percent because, like, the, the director, they they want to be able to trust you. They 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 want like to. And that's like that's as well because like they've they've come onto this project because they're passionate about it yeah they, they want you to come into the room passionate about this project as well so they know whether it be a play or whether it be a film or whether it be a tv show mm. every day on set or every day in the rehearsal room or every day you step on that stage they know that you're going to be they, they know that you're going to be passionate and they know you're you're doing it for the right reasons um and uh and I think that I think it's a simple thing of literally knowing your stuff, of yeah. like doing research on the character, the the play, the, the film, whatever it is, do, doing the research on like uh, who, well, like their previous work, you know, because yeah. that, that that can come up. It's like like if you, you you know sometimes it doesn't, rarely it happens, but if there's an opportunity to have a have a quick chat, it's like here, just wanted to say I loved X, I loved this, I love what you did with this, you know. Um, and you know, this is why I would, you know, love to work with you. You know, it's it's at the end of the day, they're they're not this <laughs> higher being, you know, they're 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 human, they're they're you know, they're just like us. And they 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 want, you know, that person they're gonna be working for a few months with to be as passionate um about the project as them. 
and and I and I think that 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 boils down to you coming in prepared, mm. you know, and having the answers to possible questions, mm. you know, that you know the the director, the cast and director is going to ask, um, and yeah, I think for anyone who is just about to graduate, no, what 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 month's this? No, who will be graduating uh, this year? Um, you know, go, just remind yourself that you're going into an audition room because they want you to be there. Mm. You know, and I think that's 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 very important. Um, mm. They have asked for you. As simple as that. If they didn't want you there, you wouldn't be there. Exactly. As simple as that. You know. <laughs> um, so go in and play about. Yeah. yeah. And exactly, and I think um, I I do want to get on and talk about with some 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 of your work actually, your short mm -hmm. film and uh, play uh, the white handkerchief and stuff. But um, we, we were talking before we came on about um, uh, the whole London debate. Do we flock yeah. to London uh, straight away out of drama school? Uh, you know, and I, I think my opinion on the matter is, you know, if you've got money, then by all means, go for it. You know, London is a great place. I want to live there one day. Um, if you've got family in London or you're from London or you can afford a flat, go for it and then just enjoy it. But if you can't, because I know quite a few people, they kind of rush out of drama school. They move straight into a flat in London. And, you know, the acting work doesn't come as regularly as they would have liked liked it to. And then next thing you know, all their money's gone and they have to move back home. And I can't help but people who have done that think, what was the point of that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, I didn't have, any, I had money. Now it's all gone. What is it? What's, what's your opinion on moving to London? Um... You know what? It's because I did that. As soon as I finished drama school, um, yeah. I went straight to London. I assu I assumed that was the only option, yeah. and I couldn't have been more wrong. Now, again, it it depends on your circumstance, where you're from. Like, for example, I'm from I'm from about like just outside Belfast in Northern Ireland, and right now there is a lot of work here. There's a lot of work down south in Ireland. Um, so I'm quite, I, you know, I'm quite, I, I did stay in London for like three and a half, four years before I moved back. And it was more so like, I think it was two years, two and a half years out of drama school, then COVID hit. Mm. And I think COVID kind of forced me back mm. to be quite honest, um, which I'm very grateful for because I, I, I if, well, I'm not grateful for COVID. I'll, 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 I'll yeah. you. <laughs> None of us are. <laughs> I, I think you know because of the circumstances in that in that moment. I was like, okay, I gotta go back home. I wasn't planning on going back home, mm. but it it, it kind of it it basically, you know, I had that was the 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 hand I was dealt, so I had to go home. Um, it was like, uh, funnily enough, I was actually who, you know, you've had on recently, Ross White. I was actually speaking to him about it because he had moved back to Northern Ireland before I did. And I remember asking him of like, you know, what's 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 the situation back home? And he was like, quality of life is so much better. Hmm. Um, so like for I think. I guess specifically for anyone, I'll say this for anyone who's Northern Irish and who's in a drama school in London or Scotland or wherever they may be. Um, in my humble opinion, you don't need to go straight to London. You don't need to go straight to London. Definitely not. Mm -hmm. Especially nowadays. Uh, with basically like, most, most of the time, the, the, the first round of auditions is self tape anyway. So like that, that's basically, you're no longer the first round of auditions pretty much. It's very, very rare, very rare nowadays that the first round of audition is in the room. Um, pretty much nowadays, the first round of audition is a self tape, and then it's like, and, then, and of course, you know, I guess you know, there was a first round of audition. You you don't want to be unless you have to mm. spending a hundred quid plus to just to get from wherever you're going to London, you mm. know. Um, but if it's a second, if it's a recall. Then, then it's like okay, actually, there, there's some, there's something here. So I think the the uh, the resurgence of um, our, I, I guess how um, how like how big the the self tip is now. I think it, I think it's very, I think it, I think it's a positive thing. I think it's a very positive thing. Um, 
but most yeah most of the time that the first round is a self tape so not necessarily do you need to be in london um but again if like because i like for example i've got a friend italian friend um who to be quite honest like where she's from there's not much mm. there in terms of in terms of the arts like i i feel very blessed that there's a lot happening in northern ireland um like we've got three three big film studios pretty much in a stone's throw distance from each other mm. you know um so i'm yeah like i said i'm very blessed um but i did try i tried to make london work like i really tried to make london work um and uh but but i think i think it's good to know that it's not the only option it's definitely not the only option which i did think it's definitely not the only option mm. um because unless you you know hit the ground running a lot of the time you're fighting an uphill battle because of the the financial aspect of it you know paying rent paying bills and then you get an audition in and you've got bugger all time to actually do the right preparation for it and do it um, because you've got to do a double shift in a bar or a cafe or the theater or whatever it is just to pay rent mm. you know it, it's extortionate to live in london if you're if you're fresh out of drama school um or if you've just not got the rules which which again can happen it, it can happen um but if you hit the again if you hit the ground running and, and you get a, a good role before you even graduate then oh, by all means go to london happy days if you live in this like if you live in the surrounding areas of london there's no issue because then you can just commute in in and out um i guess it depends if like i i, I guess if you if you're from a place that doesn't have anything like if you're from manchester that's no problem because there's so much going up in manchester yeah you know uh scotland as well if you're from Gla glasgow or edinburgh happy days there's a lot going on there both screen and theater um but if you're from the arse down of nowhere well that that you know that probably means that you know you need to move to somewhere where it's more prominent um but i i think i think um i think financially i think because like money is is you know such a huge thing i i think uh before you make a decision to go to london you need to have savings mm. you need you need to have savings whether that be if you're like you're on, on a ba course mm. every summer you work to get money you know save put it away so because if your plan is as soon as i finish i'm gonna i'm gonna move to london happy days but at least if you got like maybe three three to six months rent already sorted happy days because then you've got three to six months of pure dedication and focus on audition, 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 rather than needing to worry about, oh, I've got to do this shift. I've got to do this shift. I've got to do this shift and so on and so forth. Um, but it's, it's, you know, it's a tricky question. Mm. It really, it, like, mm. because ev everyone's uh, situation is different. Yeah. Um, and I, and I think, I think, I think from my perspective, like London isn't the be all end all nowadays anyway yeah like it's a beautiful place to to live if you've got a bit of money mm. um but if you're going there and you're constantly broke it's going it's it's definitely it, it'll speaking from experience it will definitely affect you as an actor because mm. it'll affect your mindset your 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 most of the time you're tired you're fatigued because of the amount of hours you're working just to pay the bills and then on top of that doing auditions um and also on top of like, trying to find jobs that allow the flexibility to like here by the way say to my boss by the way here i need to head on here uh i've got an audition I'm like wait no because that that will happen and then like oh th does that mean i've got to quit this job and find another one it's it's and I, so I, th I think actually do one thing is important is is you know savings is key before you move to london yeah like definitely save up before you go to london because if you go there with no money oh, and you're you're you're, you're more, more often than not you're fighting uphill battle yeah um, and uh but specifically from my perspective 
and anyone who is Irish or Northern Irish, you don't need to go straight to London. Oh, like 100% you don't. You let, there's so much work uh, back here and uh, there's such a big community as, as, as well. Mm. Um, but, uh, but again, like I said, you know, I can't speak for everyone. Yeah, uh, and every, everyone's situation is different and and unique. Um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it's yeah, it's, 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 all, it's, all, it's all personal taste, really. Yeah, but you yeah. know, and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, but that's great. Um, so let let's talk about um, sort of speaking of Ireland. You know, you've had a very uh, I'd say a wonderful involvement in the in the brand new musical, The White Handkerchief, that was on at on in Derry last year. Yeah. Um, for anyone who's, and I think I mentioned in the intro, like if and down in the link below, there is or was a a uh, descript a link to BBC iPlayer with a documentary behind this wonderful new musical. Um, it's set around uh, during. It's basically it was premiered on the uh, 50th anniversary of the Bloody Sunday Massacre, which sadly is a you know, rather tragic part of history. And, you know, when, that, when you want to get too political or, or anything about it, <laughs> but, you know, it was a moment in time, sadly it's happened, but um, I thought it was a wonderful um, musical. It was a musical retelling of that day and, ev- and the build up and the event and everything that happened. And uh, honestly, didn't check out the documentary. Stephen's in it. It's just, a, it's a wonderful, wonderful piece. Um, what was your experience of, of that musical? um because it must it must have meant so much to you yeah i think i've you know out of all the things i've done so far in my career i think that 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 for me was just something so special it was um uh i I think because of the circumstance of it where we were doing it as well because like on like on, on the day of Bloody Sunday, the the march was going to basically finish in and around the Guild Hall. Yeah. And we performed yeah. the play in the Guild Hall. Um and it, it was just oh, it was yeah, it was so special. It was uh it was um yeah, and, and on on top of it just it being very special, it was written so beautifully. Uh the, mm. the music uh was 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 beautiful i i remember the uh the the first so basically I, and actually it's fun, funny i was very close to not doing it wow. um yeah and which is interesting in itself because you know and I, and I think for and i think for um people who are, are especially coming just come out of drama school um uh, or even to be quite honest even you know people who have some credits on the, on their CV. Yeah. I think the whole idea of being picky, um, it's, there's, there's pros and cons definitely. Mm. Um, but I, I, I think, you know, more experience is better. Like, I think that's, that's very straightforward. More experience is better. Um, and it doesn't matter to a certain degree, what it is you're doing, what role it is, even if you're, you know, behind the camera, even if you're a runner, you know, just getting experience within the industry is vital and it's so important to your development. Um, and I think that's actually like a, like aside from the white handkerchief, a thing that I'm a massive advocate of is, um, is, is just, just getting on a set. Mm. It, it, what it is just literally just soaking up as much information as you possibly can that um, revolves around the industry. You know, because you don't know what you're going to learn. You don't know who you're going to meet, mm. you know. Um, and and that's the beauty of what we do. Like mm. tomorrow, our lives could change. Like uh, this, my my mom and dad always said, and they, they never understood. Um, they were behind me 100%, but they never understood, like, the, the whole industry. They, ne- they could not fathom. They couldn't get it. Now they do. Now they do. Now they do. And I'm so thankful, you know like they've been with me from the very beginning of me deciding to quit my full-time job and having money to doing this. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> and, uh, now, now they, they realize that, you know, like this, this little thing here, you mm. know, or the laptop, 
we could get an email. I, I could literally have my phone's in airplane mode, right? I, I could have an email right now and my life could change. You know, <laughs> that's that's the beauty of what we do. It's like it's you just don't know where this job's gonna take you mm. and where you're gonna visit. Like I like I was filming last at the end of last year up in Derry for a few months, but I got to go to Copenhagen and that just came out of nowhere. Never been to Copenhagen, but like, why the hell not? Awesome. And it's just that's that's where it's like you know, sometimes you're very quick to say, no, no, that's beneath me. I don't want to do that, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, why is it beneath you? You know, yeah. it's it's still a job in the industry that you love and you just you just don't know. You just don't know who you're going to meet or, or where it's going to take you. Like, honestly, it's, oh, it's such a beautiful, you know, like world to be a part of. But yeah, like I said, I was very close to not doing it. Um, because I got the email through from my my age. So the, the we we the production was done by the Playhouse in in Derry, and um, so they emailed my my agency. My agency emailed me and said, uh, "This is what the crack is." Um, and basically, it was it, not necessarily was it directly advertised as this, but it just kind of mm. felt like bloody sunday the musical and i was just like i'm not so mm. sure about that I'm yeah. like <laughs> i'm really not so sure about yeah. that and plus yeah. like i i didn't i, I didn't train a musical theater so i was like well this definitely is not for me like i i looked i read it and i was like should i mm. i was like i'm not trained i'm not a singer like i can sing i, I can sing you johnny cash no problem um mm -hmm. but like musical feel like I have I have heard the people at Guildford sing and they can sing <laughs> Jesus Christ they yeah. can sing yeah I, um and I got so my reference point with musical is is are those guys who are without a shadow of a doubt some of the best on the West End you know it's it's insane what they can do um so I was like okay so I'll that that's not for me and I was like bloody son of the musical I'm not a hundred percent on that. I'm not 100 percent sure on that. Mm. And I didn't email, I didn't go back to my agent because I thought, okay, just 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 think about it. Don't directly don't just go like don't go with a direct impulse and say, no, nah, no, nah, not for me. So I put my just turned my phone off, went to the gym, and uh two hours later I came out and um and I get a call from my agent. It was like, hey Steve, did you get the email? Mm. And I was like, Yeah, I, I did. Mm. I'm I'm just not sure. And these are the reasons why. And I was like, okay, I see your point. I see your point. Um, but then we both agree because I had only recently moved back from London to Northern Ireland. Mm. And in terms of my network, my connections in Northern Ireland, they were nothing. They were nothing. So then we both agreed. Do you know what? I'm, I'm yet to work with the Playhouse up in Derry. And my, my network in Northern Ireland is very non-existent basically mm. both agreed um it might not be for me but it's a really good networking opportunity so mm. that's that's why that's what i because it was basically the audition was a weekend long workshop mm. um, and i thought you know what even if i don't get it it's a good opportunity to go up and meet other northern irish actors meet you know the 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 the, the guys and the girls at the at the playhouse in Derry. So I was like, okay. So I said to him, let's just let's go for it. And um, yeah, happy days. It's it's a good opportunity to get my name out there. Mm. I did it on that basis. And um, and I'll openly say this to the playhouse. I think I actually have said this to them. Like I was very close to saying no. Um, and so the I the idea for that audition was uh, you perform a monologue and a song of your choice. Uh, so I performed a piece from The Pillow Man by Martin McDonough. Mm. And uh, I'm gonna put it out there, uh, manifest this. But my dream is to do anything with mm. me. Yeah, uh, anything, whether it be stage or whether it be it doesn't matter. But I, I think his writing is he's a genius. He's, um, yeah. he's genius. And oh god. And um, so I, I did that monologue, and then I, 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 I did a Johnny Cash song. <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't because like with me and musicals, I'm like where do you even begin 
you yeah. know um and uh but it was it was funny because i went in and i i went into the audition and it was actually a nice thing another thing in relation to auditions that he that he said that i did which he loved was i came in and i was hungry and i attacked that audition and i think casting directors can tell that or directors can tell that mm. if you're coming in um and you're just like let's let's, let's go let's let's do this i am here to, to to perform i am here to do this let's go um and it was it was just a nice thing i always remind myself like any audition i go into just go in hungry just go in it's like i'm here let's work let's work um so i i did the you know i did the audition and everything and it went sweet and um that was in the afternoon then the evening so this was the friday afternoon then the friday evening was going through all the songs um and and i was sitting there and there was about 20 of us there and i was sitting there and i started listening to the songs and i was like okay this isn't this is actually it's pretty good <laughs> and then um a girl who had already been cast beautiful beautiful performer actress um called orla mullen um she was she had already been cast and she was brought in to perform one of the songs and her main song hmm. heartbreakingly beautiful um and you know we're just sitting there we're just waiting for her to start you know the pianist starts and uh she starts singing and i'm literally just in awe hmm. of, of her and i'm i start to cry just listening to her singing this song and i'm like well, I'm glad I said yes to this. Because <laughs> <laughs> I knew straight away, this is something special. This is something special. Um, and then and then on top of that, so audition, weekend long audition workshop. And on the Sunday, we were, which uh, basically the director, is uh, brilliant, brilliant director, uh, called Kieran Griffiths. He basically said to us, "So on Sunday, you're going to we're, we're, we're going to perform scenes from the play to the families of the Bloody Sunday victims." Right. And I'm like, and just silence, <laughs> silence in the room. Like, what? We haven't. It's like at this point, we hadn't even read the play. You know, we just <laughs> heard the songs. And I was like, fucking baptism of fire, Jesus. Jesus. Um, um, so we 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 so the Saturday was all about uh just we we did a read through of the text and then just started to rehearse various scenes that we were going to perform on the Sunday. Hmm. And you know, on the Friday night, he gave me the character that I was ev eventually ended up playing in the production. And he's like, Stephen, I want you to take this character for the weekend. And I was like, okay, happy days. And um, and the character that I played was probably the you know, on Bloody Sunday. There were a lot of a lot of um, you know, it was it was a horrible day. But I, what I'll, what I will say is um, yeah, the character that I played was the character that basically it was was the person who who murdered the majority of the people wow. on Bloody Sunday. Wow. And so I had. You know and that was and i was okay because like it was very much okay okay that's okay so that's who i'm playing okay happy days okay um and so then to perform that um on sun on the sunday in front of the the the, the, the family members of the victims was it was wow. it was just it was it was a special special experience um and it was something I will never ever forget. Um, but it was just the whole the whole weekend long workshop and audition was just it was something I'd never been a part of, something like that I'd never been a part of. It was it was just mm. it was it was just something that I I want to I was going back to what I said about when auditioning for drama school and you go in and you just, whenever I audition with Jack, it's like everything she said, it just made sense to me. And I was like, okay. And that's the way the director Kieran was with me. Anything he said, it just made sense. Okay. I want to work with this guy. Mm. So by the end of the weekend, we, we just, we just performed to the families 
and then everyone was leaving. <clears throat> and I, <laughs> I purposely stuck back, like stood, like stuck around because I wanted to talk to Karen and mm. to try and pick his brain a little bit to kind of get a vibe from him if there was a good vibe from him <laughs> because I still had I hadn't been cast yet. Right. And um, but I, I was like, I but in my mind, I want to play this role. Mm. I, I want to play this character. Mm. I think I could do it justice for the truth of the production of the story. Mm. And and I was like, I went, you know, shook his hands. I was like, here, just thanks for having me this week. And it's been an un unforgettable experience and everything and so on and so forth. And then he basically said, Stephen, I, and he looked because the, the writer um, and uh, the composer, Brian, uh, but the, the writer, Liam Campbell, he, he sadly passed actually. Yeah. Yeah. Christmas just before we actually went in rehearsals um be beautiful man brilliant man such a lovely lovely man um but it was it was it was him brian the composer and kieran three of them were standing there and i was just kind of standing like a fucking spur one just waiting for like a lull <laughs> and then i found it and i was like kieran just want to say thank you for for having me this weekend and i said to brian and liam was like amazing like it's just so so good and then kieran looked at liam and Brian and then he turned back to me and he's like Stephen I really shouldn't be doing this but I want you to play that character and I was like what? What? say again what? Say, what? Say, say again <laughs> like, I want you to play that character hey. and I was like okay so you're casting me right now. I was like yep okay happy days happy so day. it was but I go going back to like I was the, and also also leading the week leading up to the audition weekend that weekend actually i i had a moment when i was like this isn't for me so two times wow. where i was very close to saying no to this and then i go in i have the most amazing weekend ever um like it was so special so so special um and uh and yeah but and i think back and that's an interesting thing i always think back to, like i was I, I almost said no i almost said no mm -hmm. and then but I was like, do you know what? Screw it. Let's just do it. See what happens. And I th think that's a, the mentality I try and mm. um, try and keep uh, because you just don't know what's around the corner. You just don't know what is going to come from a, a certain audition or a certain meeting or, you know, going to an event. You, you just you just never know. Um, so it is very much, you know, in this in this industry, you know, about putting yourself out there. 100 percent of this. Um, but yeah, it's it's. But then yeah, so then we we did that. So I I was casting that, and that was awesome. And then, and that was in October, I think it was. And then we went into rehearsals the first week of January. Yeah. And that was just uh, oh, that was just like the material itself was just, it was just, uh, it was just special. It was just, it was one of the most special like productions I've been a part of. I, I think because of the circumstance, because it was come up to the fiftieth anniversary. Because we were doing it in Derry, because of the people we were doing it with, mm. um, and yeah, the, like the material was just okay. It was it was like even my my friends who aren't in the arts who don't go to theatre, um, and you know they came to see it on the penultimate night, and they were blown away by it. Yeah. They were like, when can we see this again? Like we want to see it again. Like it was only on for a week, you know, it was just a week run. And uh, but thankfully, though, there is um, there is positive, positive, positive talks about an Irish tour of the mm. White Hank uh, next year. Um, so wow. fingers crossed for that, because that would just be and fingers crossed to get cast again. <laughs> that, that, would be, <laughs> that would be a bit it's like, we're gonna be on tour, but you aren't involved. Uh, <laughs> so, I'm sure that's not going to happen. <laughs> no, I, I hope not. I hope not. But um, but uh, but yeah, it was like the 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 um the audience feedback was was phenomenal. It was absolutely yeah. phenomenal. Like every night, there wasn't a dry eye in in the audience. It was and and the way we like you, you've seen the documentary, so you've seen the way we staged it. Yeah. Yeah. Like we were like 
like this far from the, the audience. Like we could literally reach out and touch them. Um, and that, that in itself was, especially for playing a, a paratrooper and especially the, the, the paratrooper who I was playing to be that close to the audience. Um, because the, it was so, the experience and all was so visceral. It was like, like, I, like I, rem I remember, like there was this, there was this scene where, um, I, um, I basically, I'm, I'm taking the mech out of, mm. out of a priest. And the priest as well, Father Daly on that day, Jesus Christ. And I remember during the rehearsal process, um, there was a, it didn't say sp specifically in the script that I needed to do anything. It was just kind of like, I'm pretty sure. Or maybe, no, no, I think it did say I whistle. So it was in this scene. It was, it was, the, it was, it was very tense. It was just me and him plus one of the other soldiers. And he was just kind of like sitting down there on the stage. But um, what I remember in the rehearsal process, because um, I, I had thought about it mm. leading, into, leading into up to this day, because I knew we were going to be rehearsing this scene on this day. And and I, so I thought about, OK, what can I whistle? What, what way can I whistle? And so we, we basically, it was me and the, few, the other actors plus um, in the scene, plus Kieran, the director. And and we were like, what, like, what, 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 what should, what, what should this moment be? What, what should I, what should I do? And um, and I just said to him, just leave it with me. Let me try something. And I ended up, we did the scene, and it came to the point of me whistling, and I started the whistle. Um, smile. It's like smile, like your heart is bright, like that. Mm. But on it, and <laughs> we 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 did it. We did it. And Karen just looked at me. He was like, "What the fuck was that?" And he was like, <laughs> he was like, "I was like, did that work?" <laughs> and he was like, "Yeah." And then basically, then we broke for lunch. And he was like, "Okay." He brought all the rest of the cast in. And he was like, "Okay, we're gonna show you this scene that we've been working on." And it was the the this scene. And we did the scene, and I did the whistle with the the smile song, and just silence mm. silence after the sing and like some of the people some of the other actors just looked up to me like you you're a bastard like, <laughs> like you, you, that's that's horrible <laughs> and i was like yes <laughs> <laughs> job well done <laughs> <laughs> and it was just you know it, and again that that's where like the re the whole rehearsal process was just play yeah it was it was just so it was there was certain like of course there was so many emotional moments throughout that rehearsal process especially because of the passing yeah. of liam and especially yeah. during covid because like the the cast was dropping like flies like i was off i was in isolation for like nine days uh -huh. um so it was just, the whole rehearsal process was was unprecedented it was staggered to the absolute max um but i think what made it so special is we got through it Mm. We, we got through it together as 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 a group as a family and you know um and basically so the audition i had last week was for this second installment so we're doing like a peacekeeping trilogy so the white handkerchief was the first one the second one which is um which is premiering in april is about uh, a guy called john hume uh, who was a, a massive political figure in Northern Ireland? Probably one of the most he's, he's probably one, one of the most famous political figures um, in Northern Ireland. Um, yeah. And uh, so we're we're doing that. Then we'll do another one, I think, next year. Um, so it's to have an opportunity to work with that kind of group of actors again is just uh, I'll I'll jump at the opportunity because of the mm -hmm. experience I had uh, doing the White Handkerchief. Um, but it was. Okay, it was just it's it's it, you know it all of our illness it's it's hard to put into words how special it was um yeah, it looks, it I, looks I, special. Yeah. I, I think i think i i because we went over to london in this november november december at the end, at the end of last year there because the documentary um uh, was selected for the irish london film festival and they asked us to perform some scenes from 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 the play 
Um, so I was asked to go over um, with two of the other actors and we performed two mm. scenes. And it had been a while since I'd watched the documentary. Mm. And me, me and the two other actors and the, the musical director, we were waiting to go on. So we were, we were way at the back of the cinema and we were just watching the doc. And I was literally crying watching this documentary again because it was just all like all the feelings were coming back up of like the whole experience we, we had, but um, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a special piece. It's a special piece. And like the amount of times when people, um, I, I see people who had seen the play um, and, uh, and so it, when, when, when's it, when's it coming again? When, when, when can we see it again? Like it was every night was was packed. Every night was full. Um, there were people, you know, trying their best to get tickets. They couldn't get tickets. So I think the the whole idea of a potential Irish uh, tour is 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 very exciting. Um, yeah. Because I think, you know, it's it's that type of theater. Even like my 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 friends from who I went to drums with, a few of them come over, um, and like some of them were saying, we have never seen a piece of theater like that ever. Mm. Like it was it was just oh yeah it was it was it was just yeah um so yeah to hopefully have the opportunity to do it again is 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 um is, is amazing um but it's definitely one of the highlights top three i'd say top three one of the highlights um in my career so far mm. apart from that, that that music video uh called britney which was <laughs> which was mad literally honestly i i get uh, a call from my agent on the wednesday do the audition on the thursday get pencil on the friday fly out to kazakhstan on the sunday <laughs> my, like the turnaround the turnaround of that was crazy wow. um and uh and also actually a note of that going back to my experience with drama school and i think and i think it's it's important to note not everything will work for you mm. and that's okay yeah. you know and that that's that's the beauty of 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 you know of practicing stanislavski Chekhov, shakespeare um lab and whatever whatever practitioner it is meisner it doesn't really matter but it you need to find what works for you and it's okay if something doesn't work for you mm. it, it doesn't matter but you need to find your your blueprint of what works for you um because i remember i got that job i was like oh my god i've got no time to prepare for this and i was basically i was just walking through a desert and i was basically deteriorating as i was walking through the desert so i was just dying and then i was like okay how can i do this how can i do this and i thought seven levels of tension mm -hmm. and i was like i was like oh my god where did that come from oh i re I, I learned it in drama school so i literally <laughs> was in the airport waiting from my flight like literally writing down my book the seven levels of tension I was like, okay, I'll be at this at this stage, this at this stage, blah, blah, blah. you know. So it's you know certain things where in the moment of drama school you may not think it's working. It may work in the future, mm. um, but also not everything is going to work for you. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to remember how did I get onto that. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, highlights of my career. Um, yeah, the White Handkerchief. It's it's and, and to think i was twice two moments where i'm like don't want to do it wow. and it's it is it's turned out to be one of the best moments of of my career to date you know it's yeah crazy. wow i'm just yeah i mean is there any chance we can get it in the uk do you think it will come over here at all i oof. well maybe because of i i would um, love it to but it's it's you know it, it's bringing up a lot of um and in, in, in no way shape or form are, are we you know not showcasing the truth like everything that is in the play you know is is the truth you know this is what happened on bloody sunday um like the powers they opened fire um on civilians it's as simple as that i i have no idea i i do you know what i don't know i really don't know how yeah. it would do in in london or anywhere in the uk i really yeah. don't i think i think it would do well in new york i have a feeling mm. it would do well because of the irish connection with uh with with new york i think it i think it would but again who, pff, i don't know i don't know i think yeah. the fact that there's talk about an, uh, an irish tour which i think would be you know belfast um 
you know, probably Dublin, uh, maybe somewhere else, I'm not too sure. But yeah. the, the idea of that would be, you know, just to take it on the road. I think it's 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 silly not to. If we can get the funding, if we can get the money for it, then yeah. it would be silly not to because I think it's a it's it's a it's a show that 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 can't end where it ended. Yeah, it, 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 it can't. It, it just it just can't. It's yeah. It had everything. It it had everything, and yeah. you know. Um, but if 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 it goes, I would love it. I would love it to um, go to the UK. I would love it to go to the UK because I think it's it's a it's it's a piece of history that it's and we're not like we're not in no way shape or form has it, it does the play um falsify anything you mm. know it's you know it, it's the god's honest truth and that that it is what it is um and uh but again i've no idea no idea i would love it too but wait and see we'll see wait and see we'll see what happens yeah fantastic man yeah well let's see let's see what happens um have you just i've uh, just got two more questions uh for, cool. for you today um we've got to talk about your upcoming uh web series as well do you want to do you want to explain a little bit more about that where people yeah, can... you know, that was that was <laughs> that was funny again you know i'm going back to the whole uh thing about um <clears throat> you know just just saying yes to certain things you know to a certain degree certain yes saying yes to certain things yeah of course um because i had uh so the director who had reached out to me about this was who edited the uh the documentary for the white handkerchief and the only reason he caught wind of me was because of because in that you've seen a documentary and i'm I, i'm only in it maybe like twice in the documentary and there's me the first one is me rehearsing the scene and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, you know, I'm being very not aggressive, but you know, I'm, I'm taking no shit, you know, like, I'll, I'll, I'll just say it like that, but it's basically, um, the guy, Sean, who, who was the direct, one of the directors, two directors in the web series, but he was one of the directors. And he, so whenever he was editing the white handkerchief documentary, he seen that clip and he was like, who's that guy. And that's literally how, I got the job. Well, that's how it started. That's how the process started for the web series, oh, wow. because he he basically reached out to me. and was like here, and I knew of him already, um, and uh, and he's actually he's ju he's just recently cast me in his new short film as well. Mm. Um, that, I'll be doing that in March. But he so this is the thing is like you never know who's watching or what's happening. Like I was in rehearsals. I didn't even think further than <clears throat> this is the rehearsal we're just trying to find things out with this scene with this character but lo and behold was a certain person watching this scene and like cast me essentially from me rehearsing this scene it was mad um but he basically he reached out to me um and said look here i've got this uh two season web series i'm filming it's about uh it's called cyber police it's basically about cyber security cyber fraud and you'll be playing there's three leads. So you'd be playing one, one of the leads and you're this detective. I'm like, let's go for it. Let, let's, yeah. let's go for it. hundred percent. Um, so I, I basically got the film that for, I was filming that for three and a half months at the end of the year, mm -hmm. end of last year. And that, that, that experience in itself was phenomenal being in front of the camera every day. Um, and, uh, you know, and, Okay, yeah, it, it was it was so much fun. That's that's gonna be released. I don't know I don't know where, um, but I, that's gonna be released this year. Um, I'm just not don't know where. I don't know don't know where. Um, but that that in itself was an unreal experience because um, that was my first kind of apart from my own short film, um, and like the White Handkerchief, I was a substantial supporting role in the White Handkerchief. But this was like the first time where I was the lead actor and I was doing this for three and a half months. And, you know, so I was, I, I off the back of that, I, I, I know I'm a better actor off the back of that, of just that whole experience um, of the, of this web series that may see the light of day. It may not, I don't know, like they're little bite size uh, episodes, no, no longer than 10 minutes. Mm. And there's like seven episodes per season. Um, but it was basically a um, cybersecurity company commissioned um, this production company to create this this series, and they're like, 
make it it's like make it like line of duty or similar to line of duty i was like yeah. okay okay um so but it's basically to uh for their clientele around around the world to have more of an awareness of the um of the dangers of hackers and so on and so forth mm. um so it was like it was so much fun being a part of that and to you know work with um the the crew and the production team that i work with the other actors um you know who's who of of actors in Derry. basically we're coming in as day players so <laughs> just to work with so many different people make new connections unreal um and it's actually it's an interesting thing as well off the back of that um so a, a filmmaker an american filmmaker is a massive advocate for um like making your own stuff a guy called jim cummings and i like i respect him a lot um and he he talks about um you know in this industry we know there's a lot of nepotism in this industry and not just only this industry there's a lot of nepotism globally Everywhere. in various industries but he, one thing that he said that it's always kind of stuck in my mind is like, create your own nepotism. It's so like, create your own tribe, create your own group of people who you can make films with, make stuff with. And, you know, again, I was very close to saying no to this, this web series. Mm. Um, why? I don't know why, but there was a moment when I was like, I wasn't like, I didn't jump out whenever the director was like, here. You, you you need to like of course do a self tape for this and a self tape and so on and so forth, but I was like oh, okay I'll do it no problem no problem I'll do it for you no problem, but I wasn't buzzing for it, and again you know you just never know what can happen just 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 do the thing and just wait just see what happens, um but off the back of working with the, the this crew for like um three and a half months, um you know and the 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 idea and the concept of create your own nepotism, um I'm basically doing two short films one actually this weekend with so like i said there was two directors on the web series i'm doing a short film with one of the directors this weekend and then another short film with the other director in march mm. so it's like you just don't know what can come from a job like of course we want to do the jobs that are going to be on netflix apple sky bbc but like you just don't know what can come from what, what's what's the word like a not as a high caliber mm. like production yeah um a high profile thing yeah high high profile that's exactly that's exactly the term oliver like because it's such a competitive industry that you mm. don't know you know you you, you know you, you just don't know where a job will take you you just have no idea where a job will take you and like this web series um i have no idea who's going to see it the, the cool thing is, is that whenever the, 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 the company sent out the trailer to their global clientele within 48 hours, it was viewed 2 million times. And I'm like, what? Nice. Like, again, like, where did this come from? Like, it's just little, it's like, that's mad. That to me, that was mad. Cause I, my expectations were like kind of here. And when I heard that now I'm like, oh, actually, I wonder who could see this. You don't know who's going to see it. I have no yeah. idea, but it'll be cool if something comes down the line from some person in australia they say i've seen you this in this web series i like what you did here i've got this thing you you, you just you just don't know um exactly me, me and one of the directors and the dop we're currently writing our we're currently writing a feature film together at the minute and we're going to film it this year because nice. these the, the, this crew they always work together and they have all the kit they got two cameras good like a black magic and uh sony as5 is that is that what it's called Something Something like that. That. yeah 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 I they, like they're, they're good good like cinematic cameras they've got all like high-end sound kits they've got the lights they've got everything and i'm like guys we have got it all why don't we just write something together and you know so basically <laughs> so me, me like me, me and a few of the guys were out for drinks and then we just started come up with ideas and then an idea just like that sounds yeah. awesome that's yeah. let, let's do that let's do that and we'll film it over like six or eight consecutive weekends you know i will do it together we'll we'll just go gorilla style we'll go dogman nine to five you know we'll just we'll just make we'll just get it done because mm. why not we can we can get it done mm. um so it's just you just 
like, yeah, whenever I was like, I wasn't, I didn't jump on it, this web series, but it's again, what an experience, what, what an experience is being and, and learning as an actor myself of just being on set pretty much every day for three months. Um, and not just being on set, but then whenever I'm not on set, I'm preparing for the next episodes. So how can I find that character arc, you know, which I haven't really had since leaving drama school because all the stuff I've done has been, apart from like theater productions, but anything in screen, mm. it's been um, little parts in, in films and TV and so on and so forth. So to have that opportunity to have like a, a full character journey, full character arc was just Fuck, it was it was it was so much so much fun and I, I've learned so much and now I'm kind of like and not even off the back of that I'm kind of thinking I'm I'm now I like I could go I personally believe I could walk onto any set in the world right now and mm. hold my own yeah you know and I think that's that's vitally important to believe in yourself that you belong mm. there you know and I think you know some of course it's going to happen you know in their early stages of the career when people will be on a big set or whatever set it is and they're like you know first time acting in front of a big crew the nerves might get the better of them and well better of them and then it's like oh that could maybe work against them but it's like you know you go onto a set just believe in yourself have the confidence and know that you belong here and you're there for a reason and uh and I think the experience I had with that web series has made me kind of go into this year mm. thinking, you know, I I belong on any set and I can hold my own on any set. So it's uh yeah. And I get and I was so close to saying no. It just like it, it just you know, it's mad. It's mad. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. Amazing, man. Uh Stephen, thank you for today. This has been so much fun, man. I've really enjoyed this. This is, I, I've loved hearing your stories. I've loved hearing that you, you've got some really, really good insights into not only just drama school, but life before and life after it. And uh, I think anyone who's listening to this or watching this, you know, can really, you know, you I could take a lot away from yourself. And, you know, it shows how you're just, you're not only your, your wisdom, but also your experience and your expertise in this field. And it's just going to get even better for you. So I, I just know it, man. And it's been great listening listening to you and just talking to you today it's been great and just the final question for today um you probably you have answered this already i think but unless there's another answer mm -hmm. to this question um i usually finish on a question which is uh what's been an experience or experiences that you've had in your career which you'll never ever forget but i think you might have already answered that question already <laughs> i'll i'll give another one of course the white hanker chief 100 percent um but i think the so okay so the school for good and evil uh for netflix um i remember when i my first day of filming and prior to this in terms of screen work short films you know so the crew's small and i you know i head up in her makeup get my 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 costume my prosthetics on because i played this evil cupid and I was in her makeup in the mo every morning for like four uh, four hours. Getting wow. it all, all done. And that was a cool, that, that in itself, like that, in my mind, it's all about the experiences. You know, like it's cool if the film or whatever does really well, but the experience you have when making it is just, you, you, you cannot get, you can't, you cannot get another experience like it when, when you're with a group of people making something, creating something together, and you're all in it together, and you all have the same goal, like okay, it's the end product for the audience, you know, and it's just there's something just beautiful about that, um, and even that experience when I was sitting in that chair for half naked for four hours, <laughs> getting, getting prosthetics put on me, getting painted, getting my wings put on me, it mm. was so cool, it was so cool. But I remember the first day, I got onto the set so it was in this massive warehouse in belfast um in the loop studio so we have the the titanic studios we have the harbor studios and then we have the loop studios um so we were filming this day in the loop studios and uh i arrive in on set then we go to the warehouse and they've built this massive massive stage which was basically to uh resemble the 
a, a massive castle and I we were basically I was chasing after this girl <laughs> on the ledge of this castle <laughs> and I remember you know and there were steps up to the stage up to the ledge and I, I get up there and uh, I'm standing there and then just out of nowhere this massive camera just swings in on a crane just swings into me and they're, they're getting that set up I'm like okay 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 and then I start just having a wee chat with the the, the lead girl who was brilliant she was oh phenomenal in it and uh, a phenomenal actress and 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 person like just uh you know she's been in disney and everything so you know there's a certain like she could could have been a certain way but she was so welcoming she she was like she made me feel so welcome that's great um so that already kind of put me in a, in a, in a good kind of frame of mind and uh and i just kind of gaze out like out to the warehouse just past the like out, out past the set there's like 50 or 60, like 60 or 70 people just on the floor, all the different apartments. And I'm, I'm just looking out and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I'm like, let's do this. <laughs> I, just, I just went from like a short, maybe short films where it's like maybe like 10 people, not even, you mm. know, to then like this massive set, this massive camera on a crane. And then like literally just, you know 60 or 70 people on the floor and then the director because he couldn't get up on the stage with a microphone all right Stephen, we're gonna go for this now <laughs> like, yeah what is this What's going on <laughs> so i just i just felt in that moment before he shared a cut before he shared an action i was just like and like i said before i was like i belong here hmm. this is me i have worked my ass off and i belong here and it's like that was my first big feature film um and i was like i was like this is awesome <laughs> it's like this is awesome and i think that was a highlight because people ask me who some people in the arts but more more so people outside of the arts hmm. they say Wait, were you not nervous like with all those people and like the, the stakes and everything i was like no 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 i just you know it's just i've, I've worked I've worked, I've worked, that's the whole point. You, you work your arse off to get to those moments where you're, you're on those big sets and mm -hmm. work with great directors, with great people, um, with great cinematographers, with great sound people, with great light, like with everyone, you're, 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 you strive to work with the best of the best. And whenever I was standing on that, that massive stage and I was literally a few seconds from the director, Paul Feig, shouting action, I was just like, this is why I do what I do. You know, these moments. These, the, like that moment will always live in my mind and it's uh, always a, a positive thing to think about mm. um been so many good moments uh, so far in my career but i think uh, just that moment before i did the first take was just like it's like let's do this <laughs> let's do <laughs> this this is what i've been working for and so when you get to that moment you realize okay this is yeah, there are some benefits of hard work. <laughs> and as well as that, once you go in, because you're you're a little a small cog in a massive machine. Yeah. Especially if I was in that type of film. Yeah. Um, I I felt valued. Uh, whenever I arrived on set, it it wasn't a case of like, you know, because in that on that film there was Lawrence Fishburne, Charlie Theron, uh, Kerry Washington, uh, Michelle Yeoh, but they didn't when i arrived on that set i felt like a valued member of the team mm. and that was that was amazing um but i did my scene um you know my, my few days of shooting and when i finished it i came off just and it was because the, the warehouse was dark and i came out and it was a little bit bright it was like kind of like i don't know it was, it was quite i was just a moment of like walking into the light of like this is this is my career is going clear. It's like it felt like f finally my career started to because it was I, I just I literally I moved back to Northern Ireland in January or no December and I got I got confirmed for this job in March and I just kind of felt me moving back home. It's like little thing, little decisions, little choices you make. Mm. And I go back to the white handkerchief saying, and I said possibly no twice. I was like, no, let's do it. The web series. Yeah, I did it. 
and then things come from it and experiences happen. And I think with that, and that the, 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 the choice of like, do you know what, screw it. I'm, I'm going to go back to the very beginning. I'm going to start from the beginning. I'm going to go back home to Northern Ireland and, and, and start from there and build up my network, build up my connections, build up my tribe, um, create my own nepotism. And, uh, and I was just, whenever I kind of finished my final day of filming, I walked out of that stage, walked out of the warehouse into the bright light. And it was just like, worth it. Mm. It, was just, it was just a nice moment of like, I'm doing the right thing. Mm. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. you've done absolutely the right thing man it's only it's only it's only going to keep getting better for you i can just tell it's great and just just to finish on um so you yeah thank you for that and thank you for today i've really really loved it man thank you so much for your time and uh for anyone who's also interested yeah the documentary link is below and also i'll put a link to your short film as well chasing uh down down below as well and, yeah and uh you know it's an award-winning short film about the dangers of gambling written and directed by uh by Stephen and also you wanted to give a quick shout out to your cinematographer as well <laughs> yes Elisa and I will I'll send you her socials uh yeah so please do yeah she is a phenomenal um creative phenomenal artist phenomenal cinematographer um but she does she's a poet she's a poet as well um but literally I don't think I've I, I've probably told her but I don't think I've kind of publicly said this but I couldn't have done I couldn't have made chasing without her. Like I a hundred percent, you've no idea how lost I would have been without her. And um, yeah, I'll send you her socials. Cause I, you know, she, 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 her career is going boom, boom, boom. Like it's, it's going and she, she's, she deserves every, every success. Um, but uh, yeah, that, that, that short film was, was hell. <laughs> but it, was one of the best things i've ever done again there's another highlight yeah. there, there's another highlight you know doing that i, I was I, people thought i was mental people thought <laughs> i was mad doing this but i thought no 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 it's an idea and i want to develop it and i want to do it because i need to learn and that's why you know that's the way again the beneficial thing of just trying so many different things in this industry you know because it's everything is a learning curve everything's an experience so yeah yeah and there you have it, Stephen. Yeah. Uh, this has been great, man. If you, if you just hang on, I'll finish the recording and I'll say goodbye to you one to one. But uh, wow, well, what a great first episode of 2023, uh, guys! Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. Happy New Year once again. Hope 2023 is 2023 is your year. This has been the Uncensored Critic Podcast, and we will be back very soon. I can assure you. And once again, Stephen Calvert, Calvert. Sorry, <laughs> get your name right at the end, Stephen. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. Thank you, Oliver. Thank you so much.